started the Emerald in 2014 to provide a counterweight to the negative press about the South Seattle area. They never really talked about the beauty that was here. They never talked about the artistry that was here. They never talked about the camaraderie and the solidarity that we had uh, amongst races and classes and creed. Unfortunately, that didn't always uh, come across in, in most media outlets. In the beginning, it was super scrappy. I was in my mother's basement writing away. I founded it alongside with my parents. We wanted to approach storytelling much differently from legacy media. Media has this habit of swooping in like a vulture to extract emotional resources as opposed to uh, being within and alongside a community. There is something that is special about this place. This truly is the most unique place on earth. I was writing for the Emerald almost as soon as I discovered the Emerald because I found them through the University of Washington when I was a student. Watch Dragon began actually as a little bit of a joke. I can say demonstrably, like certain specific stories that have had an impact that I know of for a fact. Protesters being denied access to their own medical records, but um, SPD wasn't letting them have them essentially. And then I wrote a story about it and then SPD was like, just kidding. When I first started contributing, it was mostly trying to get a laugh while getting people to be a little bit more engaged about what's going on. I'm a Mexican. I identify strongly with the Latino community around here. And I think those stories are really important because they show other people that you can always make it if you have help from your community. The best part of the process is writing it and bringing the story together. You get to see what is essentially put on paper. It puts me in a lot of situations to learn about things that I otherwise would not have learned about. It's nice to be able to be close to the South End community because I live down here. It started out my career in journalism. It started out uh, my love for the South End community. The reason I got into medical school, honestly, was because of the work I did with the Emerald. A lot of how I continue in medicine is giving voice to every patient's story. I wrote a story about a Somali author about her experience being a third culture citizen, and it was really, I saw a lot of myself in her story. It made me reflect on my own experience. Most of the, my accomplishments with the Emerald would definitely be in the category of things that have made powerful people angry and yell at Marcus. No matter how much mainstream media has attempted to erase those of us who have been historically marginalized or those whose identities don't fit neatly into checkboxes, we're still here. Our stories are no less valid, vibrant, real, or necessary. Our stories deserve to be told with care and witnessed with the intention to understand. When we read something and it feels authentic to our experience, we can go, I feel seen, I feel heard, I feel valued. You see a photo and you see the beauty of BIPOC people in the communities in which you live. That feels authentic to you because you know that's who those people are and that's how they look. The South Seattle Emerald speaks our language. They understand how to speak to the residents and businesses in the ways I'm not seeing with other media. Well, I was so happy to be speaking to somebody about my home. Independent journalism and specifically South Seattle Emerald uh, play a, a critical role in the well-being of South Seattle. Ten years ago, I became an Emerald reader. And at that time, there were maybe two, three stories a week. But I just relished every story. And they've grown so much in recent years. And it's really a resource for everybody. I happen to know that certain city council staffers are required to open the Emerald every morning uh, before they start any other work because they need to know what's going on in the community. And there's many people who read it far beyond our community and that helps others know who we are. The Emerald was a hugely essential part of my experience of just understanding this place, the history of it, what it means for me to be a person living in this neighborhood and this city. I've been thinking a lot about people like Ida B. Uh, Wells, thanks to her, thanks to so many people who took it upon themselves to build media that actually reflected the authentic voices of people who were being left out. 
we now have that record. I'm seeing less and less community representation and less honest journalism that's done with integrity. Who's going to keep inspiring and informing people? Who's going to be our voice? The Emerald is really who I think of, especially in the Seattle area. Where do I see the Emerald in 10 years? That's a, that's a big question. We know that South Seattle, a lot of people are moving further south in the King County. We need to do more as our community um, moves in that direction. We have no plans to go behind a paywall because then we start to defeat the whole purpose of what the Emerald's about. Accessibility. Accessibility. Accessibility to information. Yes. And the biggest thing is, though, that we continue to amplify the voice, the authentic voice of South Seattle and continuing to reflect who South Seattle really is and provide that platform for the community to tell its narrative. I think part of how the Emerald will look in 10 years will be informed by community. Right. Community doesn't just move like this. Right. It moves like this. Right. Our priority that has been really forefront for us is our website. One that incorporates video, audio, really has rich, robust displays of photography. I think another of our priorities is, again, thinking about the representation of the writers. There is the glimmer of possibility that is here. When I think about our ancestors, there is a specific history when you're talking about BIPOC communities that our ancestors had to have that glimmer. They had to find that hope in each and every moment of their lives. And I think that one of the things that Emerald does in terms of co building community is keeping that hope alive by telling the stories of our full community, stories from the past, but stories of today. To do all that and not be behind a paywall, we need the community support. South Seattle Emerald pushes the media ecosystem to be better. And one way you can support the South Seattle Emerald is to become a rainmaker. I hope people think about becoming a rainmaker and come to our website and read it. And remember that by helping us, you help the whole city.